Hello friends, myself Rakesh, first chapter for RE framework and uh, this is very critical to know that why RE framework, what is that framework and what is the necessity of having RE framework. So before we understand RE framework, we need to know our entire business process that we design as a workflow can be divided into three different categories. The first one is called linear process. Iterative process is the second one and the third one is transactional process. Now the transactional process is the evolved process. So let's go ahead and understand each process one by one with example. Now let's understand what is a linear process. Generally linear process run once. You know they are very simple in nature. They run just once. So I have a flowchart in the background which I am going to explain. Uh, so let us understand what are the different stages in a workflow that we generally execute if we have to put it inside a framework. How does that look like? Let's have a look. So this is the example of linear business process wherein the first step is you initialize your workflow right and then next you get data. So we'll see an example and then you process that data and your workflow get over. Okay, so everything is run just once. So let's see in a workflow how all of this framework fit in. So this is a workflow of a linear business process. So what I'm doing here, I'm trying to collect email, right? So what I have done, the first process of initializing is I'm storing my Gmail password in a get password activity. And then I'm using the get IMAP mail message and I am you know only reading one activity so this is very critical in a linear process where you just process it once the data is processed you get the data once you process the data once so that is the formula of a linear business process so i have already mentioned run just once okay so this is the key word to remember linear process is simple where you run the entire thing or all the stages of the process just once okay so here if you see in the background the get IMAP mail message, getting the first unread email in my email and then it is going through and showing that from address. So whatever you want to do, you want to store inside a Excel document, you want to uh, reply to that email. So whatever you do, you get one email, you process the data and perform the action. So if you see it here, we are initializing the data by get password and then we are getting the data by get IMAP where we are getting the first email from the inbox and then we are processing the data whatever action you want to take and the entire workflow ends here. So this is called linear very simple straightforward in nature but the only problem this is not very suitable for repetitive process okay if i have to process let's say let's say all the emails then i have to run the bot again and again right because it only picks one email right it picks one email and then process the data so if i have to process the email multiple times i have to run the bot let's say 10 times then i have to open the bot and run the workflow 10 times so because this is linear process very simple in nature but again this has a problem when there is a demand where you have to perform a repetitive action again and again again and again so for that we move on to something called iterative process so let's see the flow diagram of iterative process so this is the flow diagram of iterative business process where you you initialize you get data once so in this you will get the bulk data let's say you want to process 100 emails or 10 emails whatever your, your counters right you take the bulk data and put all the bulk data inside a loop and process it okay so when you do this kind of a process you know this is called iterative business process where you get data once and you run that data through a loop right inside a loop multiple times so this becomes a iterative business process so let's see in our ui path workflow so for an iterative process what i'm going to do in the get IMAP mail message in, instead of one, let's say I want to process 100 emails or let's say 200, whatever your cap is, right? So whatever your emails, so I'm getting all the bulk data once and then I'm processing the data 
let's say 200 so it will process for 200 times so when you do such action in your workflow this will be termed as iterative process or iterative business process now here what we are doing we are getting the data once and processing the data multiple times or you iterate that particular action multiple times so this will become a iterative example now what is a drawback now the drawback with this kind of a process is if one of the email has some problem then your entire workflow will fail right so if there is a problem with one of the email so let's say i'm getting 200 emails right so by in that 200 email let's say one of the email has a problem then this for each loop will not run and with that your entire workflow will fail okay so this is the this is the very so we we cannot always go with linear process nor we can always go with iterative process so we have to bring some kind of a standard which will work the best in most of our situations so how to do that is something we're going to learn so let's see how the transactional process looks the flow flow chart how it looks let's have a check so in the transactional business process we are doing the same activity but again in a different way so what we are doing we are getting the data one data let's say one email and then we are processing that data okay if it fails it's okay we are again getting another data and then processing the data so it is not everything is not put put inside a loop but there are two different things which work independently so you get data and process data you get data and process data so each of this run independently so they are not dependent upon each other so in the in the linear one nothing is dependent you get the data you run it if it fails it fails if it works it works right so that is how so you but you put inside a loop when there are 200 emails one of them fails your entire workflow the entire time spent is gone right so there is a more chance of failure and waste of time so that is where UiPath has brought a RE framework which we are going to learn in much detail how do you literally put this framework right this looks quite simple here but again how do you literally utilize inside a business is something we are going to learn in the upcoming chapters for sure but again here our concept of understanding what is a linear process what is an iterative process and what is a transactional business process is something very very critical so now we are able to differentiate what is a linear business process what is a iterative business process and what is a transactional business process right so the transactional business process where it gets each data independently and process the data so each of these two actions are independent of other data we will get in details of re framework because this is one of the chapter where most of us will get confused looking at the template there are so many things inside it and it is very general for anybody to get confused but let me tell you this is quite easy and we are going to discover that so re framework so you must know the re framework stands for robotic enterprise framework so what do you mean by robotic enterprise framework generally when a project is given to you um, you know to start with you will just create any kind of a sequence or a workflow and then you complete your project uh, but when in, when it comes to enterprise right when you are working in a company uh, there has to be some standard to be followed you cannot just simply go ahead and create a sequence or a workflow and uh, produce your project right it is not possible that way so you should have a proper standard which is error free which is bug free which is easy to understand and lot of things so to achieve that we will be using the re framework which is kind of a template for example when somebody asks you to create a ppt or a presentation you got a template right you get the template and then start designing inside it you start writing the title and details inside the slide and you get a proper presentation ready right similar way this is a kind of a template that we'll be using to create our entire workflow so let's learn it's quite easy all i would request you to please do continue the video do not do not skip it and uh, while I do it ensure you do a practice 
you know while i am teaching you also open ui path and do step by step as i am doing uh, while i am doing this tutorial please do that so that way at the end of this chapter you'll be very clear and i can guarantee you you will understand robotic enterprise framework like nobody else okay and uh, there are so many videos where you may not even find a proper explanation as to why this is done what is that why this workflow why there is an invoke workflow what is the meaning of that so a lot of things i am going to explain you in much more clarity so let's get started so the step is you have to click on home go to start and here you have something called robotic enterprise framework okay so this is the template so click on this one and in this window you can give a name let's say i want to give expo hub you can give any title you want and then this is stored inside this location and you can give a description in case you need for what this project is for this is for a tutorial purpose right so whatever your purpose is you can mention that okay so this is done now click on create so this is the re framework template guys you can see it right this is quite simple first is you know this is there are four different states one is your init state get transaction data process transaction and your final state or end process state okay so in interview they might ask you in re framework how many states and how many transitions are there so you would say there are four states okay so first is init state get transaction data state process transaction data and end process and this this are called the transitions okay so what is initial state is something you know where it uh, gets some data from a configuration file so i'm going to show you in detail but it initializes your project okay it collects certain uh, basic data from a config file and then it initializes your applications to see if the applications are there or not so every all the checks happen here so it is initialized and once it is initialized then there are two things can happen there could be a system error there could be a success there is no error right so if there is a system error it's going to end the process let's say it's not able to start the application or let's say the your config data is there in excel and excel did not open right so there is a system error um, so that that is where it is going to we can ensure how to tackle that here and is going to get into the end state okay and then you have something called get transition data where you are whatever data you are when initialized from that file is going to read the data generally from a queue orchestrator queue don't uh, worry about all these words but i am going to explain in so nicely and in detail that once you listen to this entire tutorial you will never forget okay so for the moment let's understand the architecture so this is the re framework architecture initial state we understood and there are two transitions once it gets the data you know this is where it happens get transaction data where it get all the transaction items so each data let's say it's the data is there in excel and you have each row right name employee employee email address and details like that i want to process each of this data so these are called transaction item okay so get transaction data does that and then you get into a two different state called you know there, if there is no data then it will go to end process if there is new transaction then it is going to process the data and this is the third stage or state once it processes the data this has got three different transition one is the data is processed successfully or there is a business rule exception means let's say uh, employee who are uh, whose tenuity in the company is less than 3 years do not fall under this rule i mean let's say there is a bonus has to be distributed or anything something like that uh, so that is a business rule exception where anyone who is less than 3 years of experience in the same company would not fall into that so that it will just remove you know it will it is exception so it will go for the next data 
okay so that is called business rule exception error while processing the data if there is some kind of an error then it will again try to go to init state and get the data once again okay so this is what the entire process uh, so in interview they will ask you question uh, what is the re framework architecture or what are the different states or how many transitions are there so your answer is there are four states and seven transitions okay what are the seven transitions in the init it has got two transitions in the get transaction it has got another two so four and in the process it has got three success rule exception and error okay so put together there are total of seven transitions that would happen where it will move from one state to another state okay so as of now the framework architecture is clear okay now the next thing that we need to learn so this is robotic or re framework architecture okay so this we have understood now the next thing we have to in detail understand each stage because i'll tell you until now people are fine so once they open this and when they see so many things you know there are so many things oh my god what is this so that is where the main fail point would be you know people get confused but i will make it very easy so let's get started so what happens when you know there are four states so let's explore each state one by one so now we will start with init state so we will explore the init state now so what you do um, so i am expecting that you have opened ui path framework and then you are in the same page so click on this init okay now your entire init block is kept inside a try catch okay so this is basically it reads the config configuration file and initialize your applications so what is this entire workflow let's see it now first thing you should do go to your ui path folder okay generally it will be in documents documents and then ui path here you can see the robotic enterprise framework expo hub demo has been created just click on this okay so once you click on this you will find there are so many default folders got created okay and each of this folder is required for the project to run so now let's say settings folder okay these are couple of debug and release notes and local i will tell you which are the critical ones and what is inside it okay so this is the dot local so this one data is something we will be using this two will not be using this is internal for the project but data is something is the folder that we will be using so if you go to data there is a file called config just open this file just to see what is there inside this construction file and this is the file we will be using in the init state so you can see this file has got uh, there are two different sheets three different sheets settings constants and assets okay so settings has got the orchestrator queue name so this is the default thing okay this is just a template and we can change it as we need so just understand now you take it very simple there is a excel file which has got three sheets the first sheet name is settings second is constants and the third one is assets so in the settings it has got some data it has got three columns name value and description and in the constants it has got again name value and description and here you have got max retry number delay shot all of this so you want to give some delay in the project so you have seen in lot many of my tutorial where i'm using excel file and picking some data and utilizing right so it is the same thing that i'm doing here with this template so this is a pre made template and pre made uh, variables and details are created where i'll be using one of them and get some data value of it and utilize in my project so for as of now you understand this is this is just a 
excel file which has got some data we have to pick this data and utilize in our workflow okay that should be our understanding at this moment okay let's get back so now in the init state if you see the very first thing they have written is initialize system error so while uh, if there is kind of any while opening while running the robot if there is some kind of a system error which is coming then it will fail it will go to end state i said you right in the main if there is a system error it should go to in case of system error it will automatically go to end process now if so what they have written initialize system error system error is equal to nothing so if it is nothing if there is of course there will be no error at the beginning so if there is no error then it will move on to the second one so this one so we will you know have little patience because we have to explore each of this item slowly one by one so once we have an understanding then it will be quite easy to understand all of it i am telling you guys so this chapter is very critical you have to have patience and one by one you have to do it so now the second step in the workflow is if they have used a if condition and they are saying config is nothing so what is this config is nothing means you go to variables you see there are so many by default this template has got multiple variables okay by default within the template they have created everything for you you just have to know what they are and you have to utilize it if you go to arguments same way they have created you know argument for this also now the config is not you know the con there is something called config so where this config is coming from let's see that so you see there is a variable they have created called config and this is a dictionary type and there is default value is nothing so config is a so we need to remember one by one okay so what we are learning config variable which is a dictionary type okay and there is no default value so they are using this config value here in the if statement and saying config is nothing okay if there is no config file then because initially there is no value right so it is of course nothing then you so config if you see in the variable there is no default value given so of course the config file is nothing there is nothing is there so for the first time when it runs the config file is nothing then it should do this okay invoke the init all settings workflow so this workflow will be started so to understand this workflow let's get into that click on open workflow so this much you understood right so two parts are very simple first is system error is equal to nothing of course in the starting there will be no system error so it will go into the next one here they are saying config is the dictionary variable is nothing of course it is nothing at the beginning because there is no default value so it will get into then section and it is going to invoke this workflow so now what is this workflow we need to understand so for this all you have to do click on open workflow so where this workflow is coming guys there has to be somewhere this workflow is already stored so to see that go to your folder okay so there is something called framework if you go to framework so these are the activities which they have created already you just have to invoke and use it okay so kill process is the entire workflow take a screenshot is the entire workflow so similarly for all of this they have created all different close all applications you can just use this okay so it is quite easy so you don't design from the beginning you can just use this templates and start you know working because most of our workflow will have you know utilize these are very common things so they have already built it for you and you have to just utilize it that simple okay so for the for, for the timing if you see what they are utilizing in the if section right we were here so in the if section they are utilizing init all settings workflow okay you can say init all settings workflow so here if you go init all settings so this is the workflow they are trying to utilize so let's see what is there inside the workflow just by clicking on it okay so we have opened init all settings so till now it is clear 
So right now we have come to the first workflow in it all settings and what is inside we are going to learn. Okay. So the very first thing they are doing in this one is they have created a assign. They have taken a as this is an assign activity and in the assign activity they have used a variable and they are declaring something. So let's see. So here. So out config is the argument and here they have written new dictionary of string object. So they are actually creating a new dictionary with no values. So they are just initia initializing the dictionary. So if you see, if you go to your arguments, out config is a out. That means what is the meaning of out? So whatever value finally this will have, this is going to give the value outside of this workflow okay so i can utilize anywhere in my project so this out indicates the value whatever value that is going to contain that is going to be utilized at the outside of this workflow okay that is why it is out okay so now you have understood first thing they have created a variable it's a dictionary variable so so there is a variable called config variable in the main workflow and it is a dictionary type and when we get into the init all settings so we are inside init all settings invoked workflow right init all settings invoked workflow inside this the first variable which they have created is out underscore config okay so this is again a dictionary type okay currently it has it has got no value at the moment okay there's no value simply the, as you create a variable right uh, you declare a con dictionary variable simple to declare that this is the you can try that out new dictionary of string comma object so the first value the key will be of string and the value is of a object type okay that is the meaning of this one okay new dictionary of string is the first value is called of string type and the second this is the key and this is the value which is object type. so we'll understand what is a key what is a value why dictionary all of this we will understand just continue okay so first right now the step number one they have done is they have created a variable wonderful now they have used a for each loop inside the for each loop they are using another variable called in config seeds so what is in config seeds if you go here the variable is created in config seeds and here it is a string array okay it's an array type and here they have given a two values they have simply given simply if i tell you create a string array and give rakesh ramesh two different names so you'll just simply create a variable here right and then you so then you give a value so this is an argument you know which is in that means you are giving value into this variable so you are giving settings and constant these are the two different values to this variable okay simple simply if i ask you to give uh, in config seats rakesh and ramesh you just write these two names and the value will come okay now let's see when the for each loop is running what are the values coming so to do that all you do you disable all the activities guys so first thing you do is disable all the other activities and we will learn one by one okay control plus d control plus d or else you can just right click and do disable activity so i have disabled all the activities now okay you can see all of this has been disabled so nothing will run so what i want to do when they are saying in config seats and if i use a message box okay and here i want to see what is the value this sheet contains so i'll simply say sheet okay now if i run this so you can see that the in underscore config seats it is a string variable which contains two data one is settings if i click okay then again the for each loop is running and then next value which is derived is constants okay so, so this you have understood so this is nothing very simple this is a string array 
okay argument which has got two default value settings and constants so why they have given given settings and constant reason being they wanted to access this config file and this config file has got two different names settings constants and this asset okay asset is something we will not utilize generally we will not utilize this so they are not um, utilizing it over here uh, this particular sheet but anybody who requires it they can use this so you can give sheet constant and asset you can in the dictionary you can declare three values okay here they have declared two values you can declare two three values so so that is not a matter so you understood why they have given names okay now if you go back here the next thing that they have done they are using a read range now in the read range the sheet when they, it is running for the first time the first value is settings the second value is constant so the first value comes here settings so it is reading generally you write right in read range sheet 1 sheet 2 whatever your name of the sheet so instead of doing that they have done it in a different way they have used a for each loop they have already given the value and the value will it's a variable um, in the for each which will have the value called settings for the first time and it will read the entire file so what it will do we are just simply reading the entire data in the sheet so whatever the data is there it should just read it that's all okay i think this is clear so now what i'm going to do i'm going to remove this control e okay so and i'm going to delete this so we understood this one okay now in the read range settings in config file is your what is in config file guys in config file if you go to arguments in config file stores the path of this excel file data config so this is why you might get confused instead of directly saying they have used a variable and the variable has got some value and you might just confuse what and looking at the underscore that makes more more much more technical right uh, okay okay so this is complex no this is not complex see this is a variable and this is a default data instead of writing data slash config they have written the variable that's all okay so that the variable can be utilized at multiple places so you don't write the same thing repeated times right that is the use of the variable so there is using the variable so it is understood so it is going to that folder open that file and that in that you should read the sheet so the sheet will have the first value is settings so the first data will be read so once it is read the data getting stored in the data table and the data table name is config table okay the data table name is config table if you go to variables so this is what you have to do config table is the data table okay so you understood how the data is being fetched from the sheet so till now what we are doing simply we are you know we are going to that excel file and fetching the data from each of the sheet so we will fetch the data from settings we will fetch the data from constants whatever data is there it will just fetch using a data table so this much is very much clear to all of you okay now let me go to the next step which is this one so let me remove this command out control e so let me activate this okay so you understood the data table has come now you want to see the data table right what is there in the data table one second let me do control e control d let me disable that let me show you something let's say what is there inside the data table i want to know for that what you'll be using user output data table and here in the output data table what is the data table they have declared it's called config table right so i'll use the same data output data table here you can say config table so config table is your data table coming from the read range okay and the text output let's say control k let's say msg is my variable where the data will be stored and let me use the message box okay and here let me say msg so let's see what are the data it's fetching okay so before you do that what i will do i'll create another copy of this because i cannot keep this file open because they are not using excel application scope right so it will throw me an error if the file is open so let me make a copy so i can compare you what data it's pulling
okay this is the copy i'm creating all right so the copy is ready so let me run it now and see what data we are getting in the message box so i am dissecting all of this and showing you one by one okay how what is the data we are getting so once we have an understanding of this we'll understand the entire workflow and for the entire future we'll be able to use it without any doubt so let me run it okay so in the message box uh, the data that has come is if you see first is it has the sheet it is reading the sheet one right which is settings so when it goes to settings you can see it is reading name value description then orchestrator so it is reading row by row orchestrator queue name kibana demo queue orchestrator queue name okay then there is a blank space then log of business process name framework so it is reading row by row okay now if i click on okay the, now it will go to the second sheet which is constants and is going to read all of the data name value row by row description max retry number zero okay and then must zero whatever it is then time out short there is a space so it is you can see log message application exception log message application exception it is reading all the data of the sheet okay row by row is that clear and then system exception so you also try that you will find the data table is just reading both the data okay it is not reading the third sheet it's just reading settings and constant because this is what we have declared in the argument in config sheet should say settings and constants and settings and constants are fed into the for each loop right settings and this is a this is a simple string array and it is just giving the value so you can directly write right read range settings read the sheet name is uh settings and then you can use one more activity read range again you can say constant so that is one way this is a different way okay you understood so this is quite because of all of this variables the basic problem is people might get confused but actually it is easy when you try to dissect and see what data it is getting okay so this we have understood let me delete both of this okay now let me remove the comment so now we are inside the for each row now in the for each row we are using the config table which is your data table which is coming from your read range activity this is a data table called config table and config table has got data from sheet 1 and sheet 2 which is settings and constant the name of the sheets okay now row by row it's going to read now they have put a condition so what we will do it is going to read the row data we saw that in the message box so first row it is showing the end, all of this data right and then it's showing this data then so this is the header ignore the header but from here the data will be accessed so this are the data so it's showing all of this data in the row and all of this data in the this one now if i have to access this data so the row which has got orchestrator queue name the row which has got log of business process name so how to do that in the for each loop config table is your data table which got all the data okay now what i will do i will just comment it out and show you a couple of things which is critical okay now we are just inside the for each loop and nothing else is working so what i will do i'll use a message box here in the message box what i'm going to do i'm going to show you how to so if i say row so row is your for each row okay so from there this row has got the data table values row here i am going to say in the bracket let's say i want to pull the name this name is what the first column right name and if i say dot to string so if i do this and run this okay so you can see if i go to the excel file it is pulling row name in the bracket dot to string if i do orchestrator queue name is the first thing then log of business process then there is a sorry blank space right so blank is coming then the third one is log of business process name so that is coming so we are i am simply uh, till now what i am doing you know i am just trying to read an excel file that's all okay very simple then it is going to the second sheet called constant because it is inside the for each loop 
and the second sheet um, it has got um, sorry it is in the data table which has got both the values right settings at constant and the you know then there is a blank then sorry let me go to constant so first one is blank then max retry number then there is a blank then timeout short then timeout medium then timeout long so all of this will come one by one okay delay short delay long accuracy low so all of this is pull getting pulled so you understood how to pull each of these values from the data table using a message box so that is for the to understand okay so you understood this now if you see below they have written something called if if not string is null empty and lot of things so you know many people may get confused here so let me explain you this so you understood row name dot to string so it is just showing you the value if you write a dot trim what it will do sometimes in your excel file it may happen you might give a extra space right you can give a space here so if you have got a space you do not want the space to be captured so you use a dot trim that's the function if there is no space it will just ignore it that is the meaning of dot trim okay and then what i will do at the beginning of this i am just going to write a method called string dot is okay if you write string dot is null or empty if it is empty so if you saw in the excel file the couple of areas which is empty right this is empty this is empty this is empty so if it is empty it should show boolean value okay so I, what i am writing instead of so until row name to string dot term you understood all i am adding is string is null or empty and here after this i am putting a bracket okay i have put a bracket let's see what value it is coming okay let me run it okay so is null so our query is string is null or empty is it null the first one no right so it is false second one is null so it is saying true third one is available so it is saying false it's not empty okay then sim similar way it is going to the next one the first one is empty right so it is true this is not empty not empty so false this is empty so it's true so like that it will go through all of this okay okay so this you have understood okay it is going through all of this so if i say not if i write at the beginning say not it will just show me the opposite value okay in capital n o t okay now if i write not it will just show me the opposite value so with where, where it is null it was showing if there is empty it was showing true right now it will show false if it is not empty if the data is already there okay so it will say true so let me run this this is to show the opposite value of it so first the data is there right not empty so not empty right this is not empty so data is there so that's what the meaning is true so it is empty false it is not empty true so like that it is showing the data okay so with this experiment you understood what is the meaning of that and we are going to utilize that in the next workflow see there, then there is something called if so i will delete this so you understood the meaning of it very good now let's enable it by control plus e in this they are using the config data table in the for each row and they have put a condition if not string is not empty that means if there is a value then you do this so they are using a add key value pair so this is a assign activity okay don't worry get worried about this but this is a assign activity where they are utilizing a dictionary and they are assigning the value so what is this again very simple so wherever there is a value so first one let's say this is the key so i the column a is the key and column b is called the value so when i say dictionary orchestrator q name what is the value kibana demo q if i say dictionary in bracket log of business process name what is the value the value is framework so this is what they want to achieve in this workflow 
okay so for that they have used the assign activity and inside the assign activity you know they are using a this is out underscore config so if you go to arguments out underscore config right so this is nothing but a dictionary which will whatever value it's going to get that we can utilize outside this workflow i have explained you in the beginning so this is a dictionary simple dictionary variable it's a variable dictionary variable which will have some value and that can be utilized outside of this workflow okay so now what we are doing here we are writing simply out config row name dot to string dot trim means this will have the first value orchestrator name so instead of writing out config in a bracket i can simply say um, that particular uh, variable right uh, so this is this is the way to write it out underscore config row date norm string to string dot trim this will have the value called row value so what is row underscore value so row underscore value is this okay so let me show you okay so this is a dictionary if you know dictionary quite well so understanding this is just matter of seconds but again let me explain you so now to understand what this out config row has got the value what we will do you will use a message box inside the for each loop let me check if i am inside the for each loop for each row okay yeah so here what i will do i am simply going to utilize this value here okay and see what what is that output coming so if i run it um, in the excel file if you see the first value is orchestrator name right so orchestrator name uh, which value is kibana demo queue so i should get kibana and for this one it will throw an error because this is blank so it will not run it will throw an error but this fine we'll just understand how it works so let me run it okay you can see for the first one orchestrator queue name right uh, kibana demo queue after this there will be error because this is blank but we understood using the dictionary we are pairing it so if i say name it should show me the value as kibana if i say log of business process name then it should give me the value called framework so till now we have understood we are using a dictionary variable we are using a key and a assigned value we saw the example okay using a message box okay this part we have understood so till now what we are doing till now we are simply reading the config file reading the config file and storing the values the keys and the values inside a dictionary variable that's all we are doing guys okay so no confusion till now we are just reading the excel file and using the um, uh, dictionary variable to store the values of key and value when i say key this is the key and this is the value okay we call this as a key so when i take the key name the value will be whatever the associated value will be shown to you okay this is what we are doing till now after that we will move on to the next stage okay so here what they are doing let me remove this out control e and here the first thing is it is saying loading assets so loading asset is something we are not concerned because your asset seat is completely blank there is no data into it and we will not be using in most of our projects so ignore this for the moment the try loading asset is something we don't have to worry about and there is an exception here okay in the catch section no no assets defined for the process so there is anyways we are not utilizing that okay so till now what we have done in this entire workflow we have where there is excel file again let me summarize there is excel file which has got data settings and constants and using a dictionary variable we are trying to pull all of these values okay name and value this is the key this is the value okay that is that is all we have done and all of this data if you see right now out underscore config is the variable which has the data okay so this is the data this is the output of this entire workflow out dot config so this will have the data output okay so this is our variable that we'll be using so what we will do we'll just move a step back so we'll go this no i don't want to store anything so now we have understood in this in the main section right we are in the init so if i go to init 
we have understood first step second step if config is nothing then we have in detail we have understood what is the use of invoke init all settings workflow okay so here if you go to import arguments so there are three different arguments one is in config file which had this excel uh, path in config seeds which has got two it's a string variable simple string variable it has got two values and below that out config is the output variable dictionary variable which so so the value whatever the value is there it is going to travel from here till this so there is a new variable that have that they have declared called config which is again a dictionary variable so whatever the value is coming all the values will get stored here in the config okay so this is the new variable that we are going to use so if you see your config which was declared as a variable in the variable panel as a dictionary variable so this has got no value now it will have value okay config was nothing now config has something because in the import argument the invoke workflow whatever data has been picked all the data will be stored in the config variable so this is understood right so right now as a out of output of all of this what we are getting we are getting a config dictionary variable which has all the excel data all the config excel file data okay so till now this is what we are doing so let me remove all of this so config so at, at the end what we are getting we are getting a config dictionary variable which has all the configuration excel file data inside it so that is the output okay so now we'll be utilizing this config variable so below this you have something called save job arguments okay just open this up so here what i am doing in the save job argument config if you go here they are using a variable called orchestrator q name so if you go to variable go to arguments orchestrator q name is here and by you know by default this will come from the orchestrator which i am going to cover in the upcoming in the next chapter okay how to create a orchestrator queue how to give a name so once you give the name the same name let's say i have created a queue the same the queue name you have to give here let's say i have created a queue that i am going to show in detail in very detail in the orchestrator okay how to create a queue how to utilize so understand what is a queue queue is nothing but which has got all the data one by one in the line okay like you go in a bank queue right you are in in line and one by one the data will be processed similarly you know the the items the transaction items or the data will be kept in the queue and one one data will be picked so that is called the orchestrator queue name so here i have not created the expo um, the queue name so i'll simply write something let's say expo hub demo queue okay so i have written this so this is where whatever queue is there in the orchestrator you have to simply declare that value over here okay so once you declare so it will it will say if there is a value not dot string is not empty that means if it is not empty then so that means there is a value so i have given a value so then you run this add orchestrator q name so what is doing it is using assign activity and in the assign activity config is your variable right and orchestrator q name so or, what is this orchestrator q name if you go here this is the orchestrator q name okay so by default the value is what kivana demo queue right so instead of kivana demo queue you want to replace the value so how to do that simply config orchestrator queue name okay and here they are giving the new variable orchestrator queue name so this is the new variable right in the argument orchestrator queue name the same value they have given so this whatever the value you have given expo hub demo queue will come here so let's see that what i will do let me put a message box before assignment i am going to access the value of the queue name so that would show kibana demo queue right so this is the key i'll go to ui path and here what i'm going to write uh, config is my output variable right which has got all the data of the excel file which i said so use this and here what i'm going to do i'm going to use that so there, there is a space okay remove that space okay the same thing what they have written here in the assign activity okay now if i run this 
and the same thing if I run after the assignment somewhere here okay now you will see two different values the first one will show Kibana the second one will show let me run this and before you run ensure all other activities are disabled so let me disable all other activities control D control D control D okay so all of this activities has been disabled so let me run it So you can see the first message box which has come as Kibana demo queue. Okay, that is coming from this Excel file, Kibana demo queue. And after I replace, so we are what we are doing, we are replacing with the new variable. So the next data will come export demo queue. You understood this? So all they are doing is they are assigning a the queue from the orchestrator. Okay, so let me stop this because get transaction data. We need to cover it in the upcoming chapter in the next chapter. This we have understood till now. We are simply assigning this. Okay. So understanding each of this uh, workflow, each of these activities is very much required. So till now what we have done, till now we have you know, got the all the data into a config dictionary variable. And the next thing that we have done is assign the orchestrator queue name. Okay. So these are the two things that we have done. Now let's get into the next one. So let me activate it. Control E to activate. Now here invoke kill process workflow. Again, this is a kill. If you open uh, workflow, there will be nothing. Uh, so you can you can define. So this is just logging uh, activity called killing process. So in the log in the output variable, it log killing process. That's all. But you can add activities. You want to close an application right you want to kill a process whatever you want to do depending on your project you can add all of this activity drag and drop all of the activity over here okay so this block will work understood at the moment this is a template so it, it just is just is logging the value killing and then below that you have something called add log fit this is to add log let me show you let me enable this okay and And below that you have something called init all application settings. Now right now we do not have any application settings. But again if you have any kind of application setting you have to add the act. This is just a template. You know you can drag and drop. For example open browser. Uh, you want to open a certain PDF file and get some data. You want to open um, uh, let's say particular site. A portal that you want to open. Right. So all of these activities you can mentioned in the initialization sequence so you keep the application open before the processing or the data processing gets starts so you initialize all this application at the beginning in the background right so that is the meaning of initialize sequence so we understood all of this right okay so now we will just focus just above this there is something called add log field kill process so in this activity if you saw what they are doing they are simply if you open the workflow killing process they are adding a message box so how to do that what you do inside your ui path just hit on control l okay this will open the lock or else what you can do go to c drive and then uses and inside the user you have another user and then click on app data click on local and here you should find something called ui path okay and here you have something called logs so it will go to the same option so you can do control l okay better so right now the time uh, right now is right now is 2:22 so 2 so if you see it here 2:18 so this time i have run it so this has the click on this execution log okay now if you open the execution log you will see at the bottom it will have the date and time so what I will do, let me delete all of this, okay, and save it because there are so much of logs. Let me save it. Now let me run the workflow and I will show what it is, okay, how the logs are being captured. 
So this logs will be utilized if there is any kind of a problem. We can just read the logs and understand. So you'll get a basic understanding of that. Okay, you can see the log killing process opening the applications. Okay, now it is going to get transaction data. That is our next chapter which we will read. But now let's focus on uh, the log. So what you do control L and here you will have the execution log data. So highlight by uh, date then this is the one. Okay, if you open this you can see it has got the date you know um, 1422 is 222 is the time and then it has got um, uh, the date okay and it has got all the details so this is the log guys i was talking so add log in case you want to add some extra logs that is the activity that we are using to add the log so this is the default log uh, sorry th this is working with the add log and it has added the couple of extra um, uh, details into this log file so this is how you access the log file see kill all process you can see that right so all of these are getting tracked so you need to read one by one anyways you have uh, understood what is this log and you want to read in detail so you can see it the message killing process has been logged okay so you can spend some time to read the log files in detail but again you understood the entire workflow till now so in the initial application we are opening the config excel file we are reading all the data storing all the data into a dictionary right and once we store everything to dictionary then we are assigning the queue name from the orchestrator okay so once we have assigned then we are killing any unwanted processes let's say uh, there are times you might have certain pdf or you want to close all the unwanted application that is there in the you want to close all of the application apart from certain things so you can mention all of this so that if in case if it is any of the applications are there it will just close it out okay and then you are you know add log fields it is adding the required logs into your log file and then next is invoke initial application workflow in this workflow it is again completely blank you need to go ahead and add the respective things let's say i want to open uh, excel application so that it doesn't take time to open and then process right you want to keep it open at the beginning a blank excel file um, so and you want to open a browser and keep it open so all of this you can declare in this workflow okay this is the entire workflow is clear now so once we move on with uh, upcoming chapters you will understand how to utilize it so now you have understood all the initial uh, activity so let me summarize the initial activity the, it is doing only two couple of jobs one is it is taking all the data from the config file two it is assigned a queue name third third there is a provision for you to kill this is optional kill applications which is optional you can utilize or you can leave it as it is okay and then the fourth thing is open applications so these are the four different things does happen inside the init function okay so we have covered very much in detail guys um, so help me please do like and comment as to wh how was this training did you like it did you, you didn't like it what was good what was bad all of this you can comment and let me know so that we can improve okay i i understand i am explaining too much in detail but again people who come in the initial background requires a lot of explanation otherwise it will be a problem if i simply flow uh, expecting that they already know okay that's why i'm spending time but anyways this is one of the video which will help you a lot in the upcoming chapters and the upcoming chapters we can cover it as quick as possible so in the last chapter we have seen how to utilize the init function anyways i'm going to explain in bit in this video too but the very important chapter is get transition data so this is very very critical and for many of us it might appear slightly complex because in this we are using orchestrator queue because of this many might get confused and do not feel like you know continuing to understand this but i would make it very very easy for you to understand okay so let's get started and one more request guys do not 
skip this video because if you skip most of the concept I am trying to explain you will miss that so there is no point in watching the video so please do not skip the video I would explain you everything in detail bit by bit so let's get started on your UI path click on start click on robotic enterprise framework here you can give a name so here let me give expo hub demo and you can give a description click on create so this is the re framework now we will understand the get transition data but again get transition data is associated with the init okay so we will uh, understand the init also in a bit in chapter 2 i have explained in very much detail but again this is also good enough for you to understand and then once init data is ready then we will get into get transaction data so this time the very first step that you will take so let me explain you the very first step is you need to create a queue in orchestrator so th this is where many would have find slightly difficult right so let's see how to do that you need to create a queue in orchestrator so this is your step number one okay so let me explain you how to do that to do that we will get into init okay and in the init as i have explained in the chapter two in the init even though you do not understand anything uh, or you have not seen that chapter 2 it's fine all you need to do is just go down here you will have an option invoke in each, in init applications right just click on the open workflow okay even though you haven't got any understanding of the previous chapter it's fine you can still continue to watch this video so here in the init applications what you have to do you have to add queue okay so if you want to log a message you can have this you want to delete that that's fine but it's recommended to keep it now what i'm going to do is i have to create a queue for that i have to log into orchestrator type platform.uipath.com on your browser <clears throat> continue with your email id so once you are in the home page of, of orchestrator click on services and here um, you have already created a services in case you do not know how to create a service i have a video on orchestrator there are three steps uh, so there is a very popular video you can watch that from my channel you can go to the video section and look for orchestrator and you will find that so let's say um, i am considering that you know about this so once you have created the service here it will be available just click on the service now once you are inside the service page this is what you would see under automation you have something called queue click on queue so once you are inside the queue click on the plus sign give a name so i'm giving expo hub demo queue as a name and here unique reference just leave as it is auto retry can be yes max retry could be one two three whatever your numbers for practice purpose this is good enough do not change anything just give a name give a description you if you like to then click on add all right now this is the new queue expo hub demo queue but again you do not have any data right you need to upload some data so what is this queue guys this is like for example if i ask you some two numbers in excel if i ask you so what you do in the ui path you can just read the excel file and then do it but what if there is a data which you have to upload on the server okay if i ask you you upload on the server so everybody can access that file right upload on the server and then everybody can access the file so that is the purpose of queue so in the queue what you gen generally do you upload all your items let's say in an excel file you have got multiple data let's say you have extracted a data from pdf right i have uh, covered a video on that one pdf automation how to process the pdf invoices so let's say you have extracted the all the invoices and that is there in your excel file okay all the data is there in the excel file and you want to upload that to server and then from there you want to process it so this is where 
the orchestrator comes into play orchestrator is there in the cloud it's a server where you are uploading your required data right and once your data is uploaded in the server you are trying to download that and process it okay so hope this this concept is clear orchestrator do not uh, there are so many other functionality but the queue the usage of the queue is that you simply upload the data right you are uploading the data to the server and then downloading that data and processing it okay that simple it is guys okay so, and i am going to show you a practical example of how to do that how will you upload your excel data into orchestrator using queue and then how will you download the data and process it is something i am going to teach in this series okay so now our main focus would be on get transition data so get transition data means there is something already in the server or or in the orchestrator you want to pull that so this is in the layman's language in uipath language there is something the data is available in the queue and you would like to download that and process it okay that is the meaning so get transition data means getting the data or downloading the data from the orchestrator so this concept is clear right so now we will understand how will you first upload the data to the server okay so to do that and using re framework i don't want you to do any so using re framework how will you upload the data to the server and then how will you get the transition data or the items or the simply it is in simple terms the data is there on the server you want to download let's say sum of two numbers you have uploaded two numbers into the server you want to download that and sum and show it okay so something like that so your understanding should be very clear here because the concept nobody would teach you so this is the concept guys so you are uploading a data to the queue right uh, using orchestrator queue once it is uploaded get transition data is will help you to download that so to upload what we will do to upload data you have to use the init the start first first state right there are four states this is the first state so to upload data i will be using the init and to download data i will be using get transition state okay now it's very simple guys i don't know why it is appearing complex because the way it is explained probably um, so let me explain you and make it very very clear it's really really easy than anything else okay anything else it's really easy so this is this your second state okay so let's see how to upload the data so right now i i was saying you are in the main workflow just click on in it and in that just scroll down and go to invoke init applications so you are initializing something here right so click here open workflow now here what i will do let me show you the excel file okay what data i want to upload so guys this is the data that i have on my excel so this has got this is the invoice that i have extracted using the previous workflow you can see my pdf automation uh, video so here what i have done bill to name date of issue due date invoice number all this data is there okay so i want to upload two data let's say bill to name whom, whom it was and what is the total amount due so that i can make a, a workflow where i can show total amount uh, so i can sum all of these numbers and show you right i can sum all of these number and show you what is the total amount so how to do that so as i said as i said the first step is you know to upload the data right 1.1 so you need to upload the data and then then you need to download the data so there are two things so how to upload the data that is something you have to do it in the init one state okay in the init the first state for this i'll be using the excel application scope i will copy the path of the file in the double quotes put the path of the file where you have the data it could be you can take some example and one more thing guys while i am teaching please open your ui path that is the best way to learn and do it along with me okay so now i have given the path what i will do next is i'll use a read range activity to read the data right that's where i'll upload the data right once i read the data okay copy the sheet name i would request you to copy sometime while typing you might make mistake so pdf extract is the sheet name here you need to paste that data 
done and I move on to read the entire range. Here I will create a data table control plus K. So it, it is PDF data table. Okay. PDF DT is the data table. All right. So once I have read the entire range of Excel, all the data is there in now PDF DT. Okay. So once you have declared the PDF data table, what you do? Use a for each row. All right. So that it will read the data row by row. Okay. It is going to read the data row by row. And then we are going to upload each data row by row. So all this data row by row, these are called transaction item. Remember the key term, it is called transaction item. So here in the for each loop, mention the data table name PDF DT. Now type orchestrator. And here in the orchestrator, these are all different activities. Okay. So now we will be using the queue. Just expand the queue and you have something called add queue item. Okay. Now in the add queue item, what you will do, you will mention the queue name. Okay. Here is the queue name. So as I told you how to create the queue and the queue has got no data 000. So this is the name you have to copy. And here in the add queue item, you have to paste and ensure you put a double quote. Okay. Because it's a string. All right. So once that is done, so how the data will be fed, you have created the add queue item and you mentioned which queue the data should be uploaded. Okay. So you have done that. Now you have to enter the data, right? So for that, so what are the data you want to enter from the Excel file? There are so all the data. Okay. Now, for example, what I will do, I just want to upload this data and this data. I don't want all the data from the Excel because I just want to know what is the total amount when I sum all of this and who are those people. So I, I will just take this two data. Okay. So how to do that? So the name is built to name, right? And the next is amount due. Create the argument in underscore your all your arguments should be in this format. Okay. As you create variable in a general way for for arguments, this is how you create. So I will say in. Uh, so I want to know the name, right? It's a name. So how it is from where it is coming from? It is coming from row in bracket. You have to simply say the exact name of the column. So this is the exact name. I would recommend you to copy it. Okay. Do not write. Sometimes the space and things you would make mistake or the spelling mistake might happen. Copy this. Now go here. Here what you have to do? Just type the column name into two string. That's all. Simple. Now the next item I want is the amount, right? Total amount. So in underscore total due. I simply say due amount, right? Uh, total. Okay. Total due is a good name. Okay. Total due. Now again, the same way you have to declare row. Again, copy the proper name from the Excel file, paste it here and say dot to string. Okay. So what would happen now? It will read that Excel and by putting the for each row, it is going to read that column and it's going to pick the first data and put it in this variable or the argument. Same, it will put the this amount and put it in this variable. Or argument okay uh, let me simply run this so while you run what you do save it and come out of this and run it here so now you can see in the orchestrator we have uploaded the five data exactly from the excel okay so all this data so let's have a look to the data how they look like let me click on this uh, drop down and then click on view transition transactions. And here you have the data. So what you do just click on one of the item. We will just verify view details. So what you have seen here now it is showing you the data, right? Speci you know, specific data object this object type, which contains the data in underscore name, joy dip and in underscore total due 
so and so let's compare that so in the excel file also joydeep sahu and 48 so your first data goes in the down and the last data will be on the top okay first in first out so that is how it is designed so joydeep sahu 48000 Joy did so forty eight thousand seven eight. Okay, so this is matching. Our our data is matching, and all the data have been uploaded. So we are successful in the test. Now, so that so what has happened now till now? The data has been uploaded to the queue. So I think it's very simple, right? You understood that. So do it once or twice, so you will understand how to upload the data. Okay, simply create a simple workflow, add queue item you utilize, and see how to upload the data to the queue. okay so once you are done with this next is is to download so this is where our main chapter would come where we will learn about get transaction data okay so this is this is our main chapter on how to download the data so let's see that so before you get started into get transaction data go to the folder where you have the config file so this is my project get into the project folder under ui path okay generally it will be under documents and then here you have something called data click on data and you have something called config file open this file and here the orchestrator queue name that you have just created simply delete this and here you type expo hub demo queue ensure your spelling is correct okay otherwise the queue will not be able to access it so anyways you have seen that so let me save it and close this file do not keep the file open save whatever data you want uh, change it and save it so let's move on to get transaction data click on this one and here you have a workflow which i'm going to explain in much detail so there is something called check stop signal okay so this is not actually check stop this is should stop so they have changed the display name just type should stop you will get this activity okay so why what is this activity this activity when you are in orchestrator and you would like to stop a job a running job you would like to stop in between you found there is some problem going on and you want to stop it immediately so when somebody does that the check stop signal get activated and there is a output variable let me show you so here do you see the result is should stop this is this is a variable they have created should stop So you can see there is a boolean variable. You can see that right. Should stop is a boolean variable. So this variable by default will have false. Okay, if somebody is clicking in the orchestra stop job when they click on that button, this value will become yes. So when the value will become yes, then it will say stop process. This is going to log the message and then it will say transaction item nothing. That's all. Okay, so this part is very clear, right? So when somebody is stopping from orchestra, it will just log a message the stop process requested. okay and then the transaction item will become nothing that means it is not going to process any of your data from here so from here what would happen it will go to end state no data end process so it will go to end process okay so now the very important part is the right side so in the right side what they have done they have used a workflow so we have to understand the workflow in very very detail okay so the very first thing before you when you see invoke first thing you should study is the arguments so without having proper knowledge of arguments if you get into the workflow you will get confused so click on the arguments okay so now the very key thing is in wherever you find in in means some data is coming from from some from some variable or something like that okay so what is this in you need to understand now as i said in your uh, first state what is the state in it in the in it state the file is called config file right where all the data was written and all the data has been stored in a data table called config okay that was the output we saw it in the last chapter okay in case you are not very clear please watch my previous video chapter 2 okay so here all the otherwise in simple terms all the data from the excel file will come to the config dictionary this config dictionary i'm sorry it's not data table it's dictionary so this config dictionary it is going to pass the value to the new argument called in config that's all okay that is the meaning so what we have done just now in the config file we have stored the queue name you remember i opened the 
config file and there I have typed expo hub demo queue and I saved it. So what will happen that data will be now be available in this variable or argument which I need to use in this workflow. Okay, so this is the main part. Other part is like whatever output is coming, I am storing in some variables or arguments. Okay, and this is the transaction number. The transaction number, if you go to variables, the transaction number it is given us. They have given a what is that transaction number? So they have given a count. It's a counter. One, two, three, four, five. How many transactions happening? It will count. Okay, it will keep on increasing. Okay, so we understood about the all the arguments or variables what will be used inside this workflow click on open workflow now in the open workflow there is something called get transaction item so very simple get transaction item where it has to get it from from the expo hub demo queue from the orchestrator right from there it has to download all the data so the very first thing you have to look is where is the queue name so here is the queue name here what they have done they have already written it for you in config is your nothing but your dictionary which has the value of your init and orchestrator queue name is the key and that that has the value so let me show you so what they are trying to access is from the config file right you have written expo demo queue so it is trying to take this value and put it there so instead of this you can also directly write put a double code and write your queue that is also very simple okay if you are getting confused simply write the queue name even that will work okay so whichever way so so this is simply the queue name and then uh, your output whatever the output is so get transaction item is nothing but downloading the data so this is our second part so download the data is used through the activity called get transaction item so this is the activity responsible to download the data to your project and then you process how you want okay so this is get transaction item activity to download the data okay and to upload the data what you have used to upload the data what activity you have to use add transaction item okay we have seen that in the previous workflow okay so these are the two activities very very critical now get transaction item what it does let me show you okay i'll show you how it is working so get transaction item here i have written the queue name and the output is going to get stored in the uh, this variable okay out uh, transaction item so this is the argument where it will be stored argument and variable are just same apart from your arguments can be carried forward to outside or inside the workflow so again i would call it as a variable or argument so this will store the data so let's see what data it is processing okay so what to do um, let's uh, disable all the below activities so let me control uh, d and i have disabled all the activities okay now i want to see what data is coming for that you know the best way is to use a message box for our satisfaction to understand what data is coming now here what i will do i'll use that variable what is the variable out underscore transaction simply type out underscore transaction item okay so this is the variable cross verify out transaction item correct so out transaction item so here what you do put a dot and i want to see what data so what you do specific content dot specific content and in the bracket you mention there are two contents right so there are two con contents one is name and the amount so let's see that in the orchestrator so in the orchestrator this is the data let me open it so here you can see in name is joy the in total dues this one so these are the exact variables you have to use okay so do not take this semicolon remove the same semicolon go here and here in the bracket you have to paste that then remove the semicolon okay that means it is going to take that data clear so now what i will do i'll simply run it okay and we want to see what data so this data so let's see two data so let's first see this and then we will customize and do not run it from get transaction data always go to main say whatever you have done and run it
so you can see how nicely it's pulling the names so first data is done now it's pulling the second name now it's pulling the third name now it's pulling the fourth name fifth name so all the data has been processed okay so you understood how this one works okay we saw how to download the data and show it so this is this data actually will be using the process state okay not here processing state the next state where you will be using but i want to show you this because understanding this is very critical until you understand simply just by remembering you are using then there is no point that is why i wanted to explain it here but the data processing you will not do it here the data processing you will do it in the next state okay not here but again this has given you ample so if you want to access one more data let me show you let's say i want to say the name and then total amount so i want to show this two data okay so i want to show the name and total amount so to do that what you will do how to so all this you will be doing again in the process state okay this is not the place as per the framework this is not the place to. so to do that two string give a plus sign double quote give a hyphen give little space between this hyphen come out give a plus sign here write the variable again out transaction item select this dot specific content and then in the bracket again you write the exact variable and to do that copy it from the orchestrator so copy this <clears throat> paste it and write dot to string okay so the error is gone everything is perfect just click okay you will see how it is appearing now so as i said save it come out of this get transaction data go to the main run it so the first value has appeared rahul jignes 89 so let's compare with our excel file so rahul jignes 89000 okay so the data is uploaded in the orchestrator and from the server the data is coming no no, no more from your excel file okay now let's wait for the next data nagesh reddy 26170 nagesh reddy 26170 so you can see how perfectly all the data it is going to fetch so there are five data all the five data will come so the transaction is over now so you have seen how nicely it's taking the data so this is not the place to show you as i said don't worry about that error just delete this okay so you have understood how the uh, transaction item uh, get transaction item is nicely downloading the data and how will you access those values also you have got a very beautiful example so you know now, right now you are master and you can upload any kind of data and you can do any kind of exercise you want okay now now below that so let me remove it out and below that what they have done there is no much thing what they are doing they are using assign activity that they are creating a variable out underscore transaction id or argument and now dot to string is nothing but what this is a uh, uh, date and time it will note and then two string so th that becomes an id okay so, this, so that is creating id so when you do a bank transaction it will have an id right some number so whatever way you want to create if you want to just go with the date you want to put some extra uh, numbers before the date so all of this you can do it so that is a simple uh, activity okay so i don't want to spend time on that one and then again all these assign activities they have used so anything you want to create uh, like transaction field one field two if it you really require to use it just have it or I'll simply delete this okay because if your project doesn't need all of this field one field two you can happily go ahead and delete them if you need an id you can create a different sort of id uh, so you can manipulate the strings you you know how to manipulate the strings so you can manipulate the strings and create a new id number okay so this is how simple it is guys so you have understood how the data is up so let's summarize so what we have done in the get uh, transaction data and uh, transaction data 
if you find spelling mistake guys please ignore while teaching and typing there might be some mistakes please forgive me but that get transaction data right so here what we have done we have added a workflow to upload the data right that we have done inside the init state and then next we have we learned how to download the data which we have done in the get transaction state okay so these are the two state we have used and to upload the data we have used add q item here in the you can see that add q item and to download the data we have used get transaction item that's simple guys so now i am sure after going through this chapter 3 i think you are done after that you have the process which is completely blank you can see that uh, let me go back and so after this you have got something called process transaction um, so we can learn that in little detail in my next chapter which will be your chapter 4 but again um, until here if you have understood the concept the init concept and the get transaction data concept i think you are done I think you are done. You are you can master this RE framework pretty well. Okay, but again I will upload another video uh, which will talk about processing the data and then we will come up with more practical examples. Okay, the practical examples uh, will start with very basic ones and then we'll get into more complex ones. So you understand how to utilize the RE framework. So if you go through this entire exercise, I am sure you will not have any doubt. Um, you know in a you know interview or something like that okay you will not have any kind of a doubt and you will be able to succeed we are going to discuss about the process transaction so let me show you what we are going to achieve let me show you the goal of this re framework so this is the excel file from this excel file i would like to calculate shade hosting fee and late fee so i want to uh, upload all these data to orchestrate a queue and then i wanted to sum this two up okay so for example if i calculate this two the total amount is somewhere like 89600 okay so this is what i wanted to do it through re framework okay this is your input file from this input file it should read the entire file upload the data to orchestrator q item and from the q item i would like to sum these two values and show the total amount due so let's see how to do it so this is the goal keeping this goal in mind we have to go through init get transaction data then process transaction data so click on init and inside init scroll down and you will find something called invoke init all applications workflow okay we are initializing all the applications so i have to read my excel file so i'll be designing that workflow over here click on open workflow Now here I have designed the workflow to save time. Uh, so I have taken an Excel application scope and given the path and then I am using a read range, the path of the file, then read range activity. And here it will read that entire Excel file. So the entire Excel file will be read and then it is going to store in a data table called PDF DT. Clear? So this is my data table. Now I am using a for each row activity using the pdf dt data table which will go through each row item one by one so when it reads for the first time it will read this entire row then it will read the second third fourth like this all the data will be read from this excel file so once it reads i want to add upload this data to the queue okay so let's see the queue type platform.uipath.com and click on services open your service so all of this i have taught in my orchestrator video you can see that or else you can follow the previous chapters that i have covered on re framework once you are in the home page click on queue and here you have to click on the plus sign and simply give a name so let me give expo hub demo queue okay so this is my queue name and click on add so all this you don't have to worry about just leave as is click on add 
okay so once your queue is created go back to ui path now let's focus on the add queue item here you have the queue name right so your queue name should exactly match with your queue created in the ui path uh, platform.uipath.com okay in the orchestrator we have created the queue it should match and then the very critical thing is your uh, collection uh, the data that you want to upload i don't want the entire excel to get uploaded right so i will choose which data so here is the item information collection click on this here i am choosing to only upload three data name shared hosting fee late fee so these are the three data name shared hosting fee and late fee i want to only upload this three data because this is the three data i want to process in this project okay so what i am doing i have created an argument called in name uh, and then here the value what i am doing row so i am running a for each loop right so row in bracket build to name this build to name is coming from your excel file okay exact name you have to copy this and then paste it over here build to name dot to string same thing you have to do for all the other two data okay for all, all the other two uh, data i am doing row shared hosting fee row late fee so all of the data will get uploaded into the orchestrator okay so this i have made it very clear in the previous chapter in case you want to see that you can go ahead and look the re framework previous chapters okay so in this area i have uploaded the data so let me go back to main okay now comes to the get transaction data so in the get transaction data is nothing but downloading that data from the queue okay so this is your queue so once we run it the data will get uploaded over here and we can see all the data i will show you that and in the get transaction data i am going to download the required data and process them in the projects process transaction state so let's see i am going to explain it now in the get transaction data double click and here on the right hand side you have the invoke get transaction data where you have to concentrate in detail again there is a chapter on this one i have uh, it is there on my video section you can check that so here what you do click on open workflow okay here the get transaction item you should this is very critical now get transaction item downloading all the data into out transaction item so this is the argument where all my data from the queue will get downloaded all the data whatever i have uploaded all the data will get downloaded here into out transaction but i want to process only specific data i am going to show you so here all the data has been downloaded now let's go back to main now in the main we are coming into the next state called process transaction this is what our topic today so process transaction what i have to do you have to as i always said before you get into any kind of workflow reading the arguments is very very critical because if we don't have understanding of the arguments then you will not be able to understand that workflow so click on imports argument and here you will find the transaction um, you know our data uh, our data was in the out uh, underscore transaction item right but if you see it here there is no out dot transaction so how the data would come from that state to this state let's see that to see that go back to get transaction data and here you have this import argument click on this import arguments and here you will see out dot transaction data right a transaction item so this is the data you know this is the data which will have all the uh, downloaded data from the get transaction item activity so all the data will be here so what it is doing the data will be passed from this direction okay from this it will come to transaction item so this is a new argument or new variable which is will be used in the the processing uh, the processing transaction state okay in the next state it will be used so remember this is very critical to understand so get transaction data will put download all the value into this variable or argument and then this data is a out direction so this value will be passed to the new variable called transaction item okay so there is a new variable called transaction item we need to remember so the value of get transaction 
item passed to a new argument called transaction item okay so this you should remember this exactly happens in the state 2 okay so after that we will get into the process state okay now process state is state 3 now i am entering the process transaction so here if you see what they are doing the transaction item the new data again passing its value from this direction and it's coming to the new variable called in underscore transaction item okay so this you should remember in underscore transaction item is the new variable which has the data so let me get into the workflow so the process transaction workflow is completely blank so first thing i want to understand let me see the values okay so message box i will use and i would like to see the value one by one so to do that what i will do for the moment let because it has not upload any data um, so i have to run it but i know all my values will be there in in underscore transaction item so if i want to see something some specific data so i have to say specific content okay and the variable so how do you know the variable which uh, where exactly so what you do you simply go back to main so where you are uploading data rq item right go there go to init and oh scroll down and you have this init where you are using the rq item right so go here here the rq item right so this is very important to know make a note of this names so your first name is in underscore name okay second one is in underscore shade hosting fee third one is in late fee so exactly the same value you have to type okay in underscore name so let me first show you the in underscore name then we will process all of this data okay so now i am i am in the process transaction state and i am inside that workflow so here what i am doing in underscore transaction item dot specific content and here i am writing the data in underscore i'll show you this what in case you are not understanding here i am going to show the demo dot to string okay so let me do one thing let me run this now then we will understand in very nicely so let me so before you run it save everything all the changes that you have done go to the main and then run it so our first data has come rahul jignes so i'm just pulling this name okay then our next data should be nagesh reddy third data should be so same way i can pull all of this items one by one rohan verma and then joydeep sahu this is the last name okay so now the process is complete now let let us understand in detail so uh, what is happening let me go to the main let me show you so here we have uploaded the data right so here we went to init then we went to the workflow called invoke init all application we opened this up workflow and inside this workflow we read the excel file we created a data table and then we run a for each loop and then we are using the rq item and uploading the data using the item information collection with three of these arguments so these three arguments let me go to orchestrator and see the data so in the orchestrator this is the export demo queue click on this one and click on view transactions so here these are the data right so when you open this view details so you will see the add q item with this following variables it has uploaded the data okay in late fee so whatever you have declared in the same way it has uploaded the data in the first in first out format it has uploaded each of this data so in, let's say because i have to sum these two numbers right this one and this one so how to do that let's see it 
so to add those two values go to process transactions and here in the process transaction click on this workflow so just now we saw how to you know uh, see the data so this time i saw the in name so what i want my job is to add two values so what i will do i'll use a assign activity and here let me create a variable control k so there are two values one is shared hosting fee right let me show you the excel file so shared hosting fee is one value this one late fee is another value and the same thing is there in my orchestrator right in the queue it is there in shared hosting fee in late fee so these two values i have to um, add so to do that i'll go to the assign activity and declare a variable and here i want to um, uh, get that specific item right so i know all my data is now in uh, in underscore transaction item dot specific content so let me show you in a bigger screen okay so the the variable which contains all the uh, data from the orchestrator queue is this variable dot specific content and which content you want so first content that i want is so you should be very careful writing this okay because a small and is case sensitive if it is a small mistake then it won't fetch the value so go back to your orchestrator and i need this variable right so copy this and paste it over here okay that is the exact name then so this data uh, because they have they all have been uploaded as a, as a string right so i want to convert that to integer to do that go to home and here you write c int convert integer okay c int means convert integer and then put a bracket okay so that way it's going to convert that string variable string value to integer value okay so now the sh fee this variable also should be a integer type so all you do is go here convert this to an integer type okay so the error is gone same way you have to do it for the other value so the other value is what late fee right so control plus k i'm giving another variable called l fee okay and here what you do instead of shared hosting fee delete this go back to orchestrator and exactly double click on that get that and paste it over here understood this way it will go it is going to pull that data and then it is going to convert that to integer value and it's going to store it here again go to the variable and your l fee is supposed to be integer type okay so i have converted both of these values now i have to add it so to add it again copy paste the upper one and create a new variable here so the new variable control plus k let's say total due right total due amount so total due i have created a variable and here what i will do delete the previous one and here i have to add this two variables that's simple sh fee this is a integer type sorry sh sh fee is an integer uh, variable plus l fee this is also integer variable so that way both the data will be added and the sum value will be kept over here again go to variable total due supposed to remain integer 32 okay so this we have understood all right so let's see if it is working or not for that let's use a message box okay and here i would say total due dot to string clear now let's save it and always go to the main okay do not run it from here then let's run it okay so the first value has come 89600 let me go back to the excel just see if the value is correct or not this two values it is adding so my value is 89600 which is perfect the second value 
26,178. So, this two sum, if I do a sum of this two, 26,178. So, you can see it is properly adding both the values and showing me the result. Okay. So, you can see that. So, all the values have come properly. Now, what I want to do, let me go to process transaction. So, instead of showing it a message box, what if I add to a data table so that the data table I can add it to an Excel file or something like that, right? So, to do that, what I will do, I will go to this workflow once again in the process state, process uh, transaction state. So, here instead of a message box, what I will do, um, I wanted to add that to a data table. So, adding it to a data table is very handy, right? You can do anything with that. So, what I will do, I will go to build data table activities, simply type data table. Okay. Now, here in the data table, there is something called build data table. So, drag and drop this activity, click on data table and here, you know, remove the default ones, click on the plus sign and here I want to create a data table total due amount. Okay. This is the column column name and this is supposed to contain integer type data click ok done so my data table is created now give a name to your data table so control plus k and here i will give total amount due dt okay so this is my uh, this has become a long uh, data table that's fine total amount due dt so this is my data table i have created okay now i wanted to because every time this runs for each transaction right so it will go it will process the first transaction show the value then again it will pick the next value show the transaction right so it is rotating you know one by one if you go to the main workflow you have you have seen when it is success then it's going back again right going back again to the get transaction data again it's pulling the next data so that way the loop is running right this you know to understand the loop is running so uh, what I want every time the loop runs right everything so it has to add the data to the data table so for that what I will do I'll use the next activity called uh, add data row okay so this is the next activity uh, now in the add data row what I'm going to do I will mention the data table name what is the data table name I have created uh, total amount due so again go here write total amount due data table okay so here it should in this data table it should add the values that are coming here so which value the total due amount should add it here so for to do that go to array row then give curly braces here you say total and should be exactly correct okay uh, total due okay so the spelling should be exactly the same way total due so this is the value this is the variable which will have the total value and it should add it to the data table that's all okay so done so i've added to the data table let's say i want to see what is the value for that you have to scroll down and there is something called output data table so this will convert the value to text and you can see it so output data table what i will do uh, let me uh, the input data table for this one is this one right what we have built total amount due go here and in the data table say total amount due where you have to read the data from and once you read the data you store the data into a text variable control plex k let, let me give a variable called output okay so output variable will have the data now so if i want to see that text variable again use a message box now in the message box simply say output variable so that way um, so let me explain first we have added both the values uh, sh fee late fee and that value comes to total due then we simply built a data table total amount dt and in that data table using our data row activity we are adding the value which value total due this variable value we are adding and once we add we want to see that to see that i am using the output data table activity okay here i have mentioned the data table input data table as the previous data table what we have create, created total amount dt and then the output into a text variable called output that that's all guys so here the message box will come in the output so let's run it so before you do it as i said save it 
go to the main okay then run it from the main so this time again what will happen let me show you in the orchestrator what is happening okay so in the orchestrator you can see all the data have been processed which the state has changed to successful so we have run already two times so all the data is successful now so let me go back to the queue okay so there is no data so let me run it again now again it it is 10 once we run it again again all the five data from the excel file will be run and that will become 15 so let's run it okay so the first value has come 89600 which is correct we have seen it last time okay 89600 so that is correct second one 26178 which is again correct the same way it is going to add all the values one by one so this time we are not extracting the data using a message box but rather we are using a data table and then trying to get the value so the data table we can utilize anywhere in our project later state okay so you understood this particular state process state how it can be executed and depending on your project you can go ahead and modify and add other workflows that you need depending on the project but you understood the use of process transaction and the key variables which are required so understanding the key variables is very very critical variables or arguments okay so this time we have seen how the value is coming now after this after all the transaction is done then it is going to you know move to get transaction there there is no data then it is going to end process so in end process let me show you end process because i don't want to cover another chapter on this one because this is simple this has only one workflow invoke close all applications so if you click on open workflow right so it has got nothing apart from logging a message so in case you want to close any application so you have this just type close close workbook close applications close tab close window so all of this you can utilize over here so depending on your project so this time we don't require in this demo but again depending on your project whatever is required you have to you know use all this kind of you know activities you want to close or kill whatever activity so not necessary only close and also use a kill process or whatever you want to do depending on that you can utilize all of this activity in the end state okay so with that uh, guys we are uh, covering we have covered the entire chapter of re framework and going forward we'll come up with you know small to complex or simple to complex examples of using re framework i'll come up with more examples in case you have something in your mind you can let me know okay and um, let me know as to any any project that you want to put it in a re framework and then wanted to see that how it runs so we can probably create a demo out of one of the discussion that you guys wanted to comment okay so we'll next we are going to come up with examples of using re framework so this itself is a good example you have understood uh, but again we'll come up with more examples practical examples to see it so guys please do like and uh, comment your questions okay so i want to see more likes and comments coming um, so that that one thing is it motivates us uh, we know people are reading and people are con you know understanding and giving benefit to other people so that way it motivates a lot uh, please please do not forget to hit on the like and comment your questions or anything you felt please do comment thank you very much guys for watching this you guys have a wonderful day